today we are going to talk about lymph nodes what are lymph nodes lymph so lymph nodes are small capsulated right lymph nodes are small capsulated lymphoid tissue pieces which are present along the passage of lymphatics right now let me draw one lymph node here right now lymph node has one convex surface one concave surface right and in its convex surface it is receiving the lymph from the afferent lymphatics it is receiving the lymph from the yes afferent lymphatics so again lymph is coming to the lymph node through afferent lymphatics and these afferent lymphatics are connected to the convex surface of the to the convex surface of the lymph node and concave surface of the lymph node this surface this is called hilum here the arteries are approaching right arteries are approaching to the lymph node and veins are draining right from the lymph node and there are efferent lymphatics and there are one or two yes efferent lymphatic there may be one or there may be two efferent lymphatics right this is lymph incoming situation by afferent lymphatics on the convex surface and this is lymph outgoing situation from the efferent through the efferent lymphatics from the hilum now this is the capsule of the lymph node and this capsule is made of collagen connective tissue this capsule is made of collagen dense connective tissue right and this capsule sends partitions within the lymph node from the capsule connective tissue partitions go within the substance of the lymph node right in this way now another concept which is very important to discuss at this stage that outer part of the lymph node is called cortex outer part of the lymph node is called yes cortex for example if i put a lymph node here right this is of course its capsule this outer part of the lymph node is called this outer part is called cortex and inner part is called medulla right now in the cortex even in the cortex even the outermost part this outermost part of the cortex right has different cells and inner part of the cortex this is the inner part of the cortex right this is outer cortex the blue is outer cortex and black is inner cortex inner cortex is also called paracortex right and medulla is this innermost area this is medulla the green zone is green zone is medulla right outermost part is outer cortex between the outer cortex and the medulla there is inner, inner cortex or called paracortex or called paracortex right first of all i will show you the flow of the lymph through the lymph node as 
lymph percolates through the lymph node. Actually, lymph enters from the what is this area? From a front lymph lymphatics and then it passes through special lymphatic channels right first under the capsule and then along the trabeculae these are the trabeculae first here the lymph is passing under the capsule okay let's suppose this is the lymph I make it red this is the lymph from here look at position number one lymph is present in afferent afferent lymphatic from here it is moving into sinuses these lymphatic channels are called sinuses these are not called lymphatic even though they are lymphatic channels but they are called sinuses so lymphatic channels within the lymph node are called sinuses, sinuses. lymphoid sinuses lymph, right these lymphoid sinuses which are at position number two right these are called yes these are called subcapsular subcapsular sinuses which sinuses are these subcapsular sinuses then so lymph flow from afferent lymphatics into subcapsular sinuses from there it come into the sinuses which are just inside this connective tissue septa or just inside the trabeculae so these are called trabecular sinuses what are these called trabecular sinuses or cortical sinuses right so again position number one you will tell me afferent lymphatic drain into which subcapsular sinuses subcapsular sinuses drain the lymph into trabecular sinuses these are also called cortical sinuses these cortical, uh, cortical sinuses of course they are coming from other side as well right they, they are present throughout isn't it so these sinuses as they come down then they will make some random uh, network intercommunicating channels right these sinuses are called middlery sinuses these are called middlery sinuses right so these are called middlery sinuses any question up to this so how many things we know about the lymph node up to now that lymph nodes are small bean shaped lymph capsulated lymphoid tissue which is placed strategically along the passage of the lymphatics right and actually lymph nodes functionally operate as house for the T cells they house the B cells B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes they act as organ of production of antibody it means they are also housing the plasma cells plus they percolate all the lymph which is tissue fluid for the antigens or microbes or whatever right they, they percolate and filter that and lymph nodes have many many antigen presenting cells so lymph nodes what they are doing they are percolating the all the lymph which is being drained from different anatomical regions of the tissues and lymph 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 fluid which is percolating through the lymph node right that is exposed to antigen presenting cells then antigen presenting cells there right they will take up the antigens process them and present to the t cells and b cells and then uh, these t cells and b cells uh, may develop the immune response right and eventually B cells may convert into plasma cells and those plasma cells may produce antibodies is that right so this is one of the very important function of lymph nodes now so we have just in this diagram we have just seen that how the lymph passes through the lymph node now he is going to tell us it comes from afferent afferent lymphatics then it passes under which sinuses first of all what are lymphatic sinuses lymphatic sinuses are interconnecting and intercommunicating lymphatic channels within the substance of lymph node right these channels are uh, first of all there are what are these subcapsular. subcapsular very good after that lymph flows through trabecular or cortical 
right? There are two names for this, uh, this channel. Some people call it trabecular sinuses. More commonly, people call it cortical sinuses. And then all the cortical sinuses drain into medullary sinuses. And medullary sinuses drain into efferents, right? So we have to remember like this five points. Efferent, lymphatics going to, yes, sub, capsular, capsular going to cortical or trabecular sinuses and from there to medullary sinuses, from there to efferent, what? Lymphatics. Another very interesting thing, they are having almost always a valve here, one way valve. We decide that flow should be only in, at entry point, there is a valve, as well as at the exit point, there is a valve, so that direction of flow of the lymph should remain in a proper direction. Is that right? Now, having said, now we come to the cells of the cortex, especially outer cortex, cells in the outer cortex, below region. Actually, in outer cortex, right, the cells are B lymphocytes. B lymphocytes are here and these B lymphocytes are arranged in, okay, in this area, B lymphocytes are arranged in aggregates which look like nodules. These are the aggregates, right, of B lymphocytes. So these aggregates are called lymphatic, what? Nodules or lymphatic follicles, that's very good. Or lymphatic nodules or lymphatic follicles. Right? Lymphatic follicles and these are B cell aggregates over here. Is it difficult to understand? Right? And here we have to understand also more thing. This area should not have only B cells, but it should have some antigen presenting cells also. Right? So these areas do have macrophages as well. What are these cells? Macrophages as well. Along with the macrophages, they are having a very special and very, very efficient cells. The cells which are extremely efficient in antigen processing and presentation. And those cells are called follicular, those cells are called follicular dendritic cells. These cells are called follicular dendritic cells. There are many, many dendrites. These are follicular dendritic cells. Follicular dendritic cells are far more efficient antigen presenting cells as compared to macrophages. Follicular dendritic cells. Right? So there are macrophages, there are follicular dendritic cells and there are fibroblasts which are also called reticular cells. These are called reticular cells. These reticular cells produce collagen number 3. These reticular cells produce collagen number 3, right? This collagen make the collagen fibers which are produced by the reticular cells. The reticular cells are like fibroblasts fibrocytes. They produce collagen and this collagen deposits into different layers and make the architecture of the lymph node, right? One thing which I really want to, I think you need to correct the follicular dendritic cell function. They are not antigen presenting cells, they are antigen holding cell, right? Just correct it and I will explain why this difference should be appreciated. You know macrophages, they take up the antigen, they take up the antigen and process the antigen with class 2 molecule, then macrophage present the antigen on the surface with class 2 molecule. Again, what macrophages are doing? For example, they engulf a bacteria, break down the bacteria into phagolysosome, and then in the acidic endosomes, they fuse the bacterial antigens or viral antigens with the class 2 molecules, and then express on the surface. Is that right? Follicular dendritic cells are different than that. They don't phagocytose the antigen. 
they don't phagocytose the antigen. What they do actually is that let's suppose a bacteria came, took up by the macrophages or bacteria was taken up by dendritic cell but not follicular dendritic cells, simple dendritic cells. Dendritic cells of macrophages take up the bacteria, process its antigen with the class 2 molecule, express the antigen. And you must be knowing that the antigen is presented to the T helper cells and then T helper cell help the B cell to convert into plasma cells and then plasma cell will make antibodies against the antigen. Now, so what really happens that this is antigen and this is the antibody, suppose IgG. This is now immune complex. Normally what happens, one immune, once immune complex is formed, macrophages will eat up this immune complex and clear the antigen from the body. Am I clear? But this follicular dendritic cells are very funny. On their cytoplasmic processes, they are having the receptors for, what is this, antibody. So they will hold the antibody with antigen here. So what they are doing? They are actually special cells with the receptor for antibody molecule FC portion and antibody loaded with the antigen stick to these follicular cells and follicular cells, these dendritic follicular cells hold antigen antibody complex for months, for years or even for decades within the lymph node and keep on offering the antigen to the lymphoid tissue to maintain a very little level of stimulation. So body remain toned up against the antigen. Are you understanding? So I would like to call them not antigen presenting cells because when we think of antigen presenting cells our concept goes to there are some cells which take up the antigen, internalize the antigen, break down the microbe and process antigen with class 2. These cells are not internalizing the antigen and not binding the antigen with class 2. They are simply taking up the antigen along with the antibodies and, hold, and holding them on the surface and retaining them for long, long, long time so that immune system remain in semi-stimulated position. Am I clear?